Do you want your keyboard to look something like this and sound something like this? First of all, let me be the first to welcome you to the Keep community, where we gatekeep our keyboards, but also tell you to buy keyboards so then you have your own experience, instead of us telling you our preferences and experiences about what are the best new switch on the- Sorry. Hi. I'm John John. I specialize in PC building, custom keyboards, and consumer tech. But enough about me. You're probably wondering, what's so special about a custom keyboard? Well, it's an art. You can choose the aesthetics to fit your preference, and you can also choose the sound profile, whether you like creamy, thocky, or clicky. Because again, it's all preference. And we can't forget about the typing experience as well. Ooh, bouncy. But John John, aren't custom keyboards expensive? Yes. And no. Yes, they are. But they don't have to be. There's definitely keyboards out there that fit it within your budget, whether it's $50, $100, $150, $20. Point being, it doesn't have to be an expensive keyboard. Building a keyboard is actually pretty easy. So, let's get to it. This is the Neo 80, which is a TKL from QWERTY Keys. TKL stands for 10 keyless, which is a full-size keyboard, you know, 100%, minus the numpad. And the 80 stands for an 80% keyboard. Therefore, 100% keyboard minus the 10 keyless numpad equals 80. Here we have all the parts to build the Neo 80. We have the keyboard itself, which is the top case and the bottom case. PCB with the foam configurations, the plates, which is a polycarbonate and an FR4 material, the tools and accessories for different mounting styles, switches and keycaps from Kinetic Labs. Shout out kinetic labs and that's pretty much everything you need to build a custom keyboard now the first step in building a custom keyboard is we need to find the pcb which is this bad boy i got the hot swappable version which means i can interchange switches whether they're three or five pin switches and a really cool feature about the neo 80 is actually this pcb has a magnetic connector on the bottom that connects directly to the bottom case therefore there's no wires so it's super beginner friendly and i'm here for it also it makes it way easier to just interchange and modify the keyboard in my opinion the stabilizers are the hardest part in building a keyboard Mainly because you have to take the time and effort TLC patience to really modify them to your preference. But if tuned and installed correctly the first time, you may not have to touch them for a long time. Here's the stem and this is the housing. You know you're installing the stem correctly when the two holes is facing in front of the housing. The stabilizer is ready once it looks like this. But before putting the wire in, we have to loop the stabilizer. I use Crytox 205 grade zero and a brush and I hold it with a stem holder and I get a thin layer of lube just enough to lube the outer four walls of the stem and the remaining lube Lube goes on the inner walls of the housing. You completely lube the stabilizer when it feels nice and smooth moving the stem up and down the housing like so. Now we got to do this 10 times because each wire requires two stabilizers. Therefore, we need five complete stabilizers. Now that we have 10 stabilizers lubed and ready to have the wire installed, we still have to lube the wire. Now to lube the wire, I put a generous amount of lube on the brush and apply it to the wire ends. I also lube the bend. And the main reason for that is because that's where most of the friction happens when you use the stabilizer. Now to install the wire, you have to insert the wire end on the bottom hole of the stem and then insert the wire into the Lego hand looking thing on the housing. And you can tell that that's where the wire is supposed to go because it fits perfectly snug and makes a clicking noise when you install it correctly, like this. When you're done, a completed stabilizer looks like these. Now we have to install them on the PCB. Before installing the stabilizers onto the PCB, if you want to use the foam configuration that goes on top of the PCB, you put that first and then you put the stabilizer on top. But since we do want to know the true sound profile, the Neo 80, I'm not going to be using any of the foam for the first few sound tests because low key, I like the foam. Now to install the stabilizer on the PCB, you do have to find the bigger hole and that's where you put the feet of the housing into that hole. Normally screw and stabilizers, the other end will have a screw hole, but the ones I have kind of have like two prongs that just hold it. It's called clip and stabilizers. So it clips into the smaller hole and it holds it in place. And to really completely install the stabilizer, I just put this small key and it keeps the stabilizer snug. You'll know the stabilizer is successfully installed when there are no gaps between the stabilizer and the PC. Now it's time to install the plate and switches. But again, before installing the plate, usually you can have the plate foam to hold the plate up. But since I'm not using the foam, I'll be using this 3D printed fork that'll, that'll help me install the switches perfectly fine. It'll take some TLC and patience to install all the switches, but this part of the keyboard building process is actually one of my favorites because I do find this quite therapeutic. Now for this particular keyboard, the Neo 80, it actually has different mounting styles. But the first mounting style that we're gonna try is called the gasket mounted. And the gaskets we'll be using first are called the dumbbells. So we'll install all those first and then see what it sounds like. Once we have the dumbbell gaskets installed, we just drop in the PCB on the bottom case and we got to make sure that the magnetic connectors are actually making contact because otherwise your keyboard won't connect to your PC. And once we know it's perfectly installed,
installed, then we just put the top case on top. And I do love the Neo 80 because of the ball latch feature that makes it super easy to take apart and put back together. I can literally just take it out and then just put it back just like that. I don't need to unscrew eight screws on the bottom or inside the case or whatsoever because that's what most keyboards have nowadays. But this ball latch system, MVP. Good job, Neo. Good job, QWERTY keys. Shout out to you guys. Last step in building your first custom keyboard is it's missing some keycaps. So we'll be using WS Wuches Studios Thulu PPT keycaps. And obviously you can choose any colorway. This is actually the fun part too, where you can customize the aesthetic you're really going for. And I kind of chose a darker theme, a more navy blue slash darker gray aesthetic, giving old school Batman vibes. And I don't have this colorway yet. So keycaps are now installed. And I do want to take the time here to thank QWERTY Keys and Kinetic Labs for sponsoring this custom keyboard. I would love to build and feature more keyboards. So liking and subscribing and commenting, just any sort of engagement towards this video will help your boys dreams come true. So thank you for that. All right, moment of truth, the sound tests. I think for this build in particular, I really like the Moon V2 switches. So we'll be trying these switches out with a different mounting style. So we were using the dumbbell gaskets. We'll switch that out to the gasket jackets and sound test. Next, we'll be using the sandwich mount, which utilizes these brass standoffs. We just install the brass standoffs on the bottom case, and then we just put the plate on top. Last mounting style is the O-ring mount, and I'm super excited about that one because I've never tried an O-ring mounted keyboard. So this would be my first sound test. All right, after feeling each mount, my favorite mount is still gasket mounted, the dumbbell ones to be exact. And the reason for that is because the dumbbell gasket mount gives a light typing experience and has that subtle balance that I really like. Also for the alphas, the, the sound remains constant and they just sound more lively to me. Now the last sound test, we gotta use all the foam. So we, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna take this all apart and we're gonna rebuild this whole keyboard with the foam this time. Keep in mind, keep enthusiasts don't like to use the foam. In fact, the reason being is because the foam dampens the sound of the switch. And, and apparently it makes all the switches on the market sound the same if the foam is used in your keyboard. And personally, I like the sound of the foam, mainly because it gives off that creamy sound that everyone knows and loves about custom keyboards. So we're gonna install the whole Neo 80 with the foam this time to get ready for the final sound test. I hope you learned a thing or two about custom keyboards from me. And I especially hope I inspired you to build your first custom keyboard. And by the way, I would love to see your first custom keyboard. So please don't be afraid to share your first build in my Discord channel. There's a keep channel in the Discord where everyone shares their first build or shares their experience, talks about keyboards, everything and anything about keyboards. But best of all, we inspire each other to build another keyboard because everyone knows you can never have too much keyboards. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification for similar videos like this, because again, try and long form out. Take it easy, hope everyone has a nice first custom keyboard build. Thank you for watching. See ya, say bye. Bye-bye, say bye. You see yourself, bye.